You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. This is an audio version of the show because I'm having some technical difficulties with my video. Pretty much, I had apparently every single one of my neighbors was mowing their lawn today. So I had almost no time in between. There was no window of silence for me to record my video, and I wasn't about ready to have some lawnmower in the background while I was recording my show. So... Here we are back into the audio version because I want to make sure we put out a show for a Friday because these these are important days and there's something starting to happen right now that I think is more dire to discuss. So I want to focus on just the one topic today. I don't think it's going to be a full show, but you never know. You know how we do it on the show. It's So throughout history, there have been several notable examples of government attempts to control the prices of goods. And always, always ends in failure, often leading to unintended economic consequences. So all throughout human history, we have tried controlling the prices of goods and services. Communism. And every single time it's been implemented, it ends in failure and usually the deaths of millions of people. So I don't feel... I don't feel the American people quite remember. Um, I, I don't, I, this is the problem with people not understanding or reading history. And this is why history is hardly ever taught in schools, because we have a government-run education. And that should be the perfect example as to why government shouldn't control anything, certainly not the prices of goods and services. So price controls in ancient Rome. Yes, that's right, ancient Rome. We go all the way back to the Roman emperor Diocletian's and his edict on maximum prices. And this is 301 AD. So again, thousands of years ago, they've been trying to control the prices of goods. And what do you know? It failed. So Roman emperor Diocletian's issued an edict that set maximum prices on a wide array of goods and services in an attempt to curb rampant inflation and stabilize the economy. Sound familiar? The edict listed fixed prices over 1,000 goods and services, from foodstuffs to wages. The outcome? The price controls were largely ineffective. Merchants and producers found the set prices unsustainable due to rising costs and often refused to sell their goods, leading to widespread shortages and black markets. The penalties for violating the price controls were severe, but enforcement was difficult, leading to the eventual abandonment of the edict. Inflation continued, contributing to economic instability in the Roman Empire, leading to one of many reasons why the Roman Empire failed. Mm -hmm. They don't really know why the Roman Empire failed. There was multiple different reasons, economic, religion, um, just society, the collapse in culture itself. So, but most of all, it's Every great empire goes through the same stuff. It happens in cycles, and we're doing it right here, right now. Every couple generations, we have to fight for our liberty and freedom, and we have to push back on government control. And I'm sorry, folks, but Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, their ticket is communism. That is what they're running on. Why? Because it's really hard to vote against free stuff. I urge anybody listening to this audio right here, right now, Do not fall for the trickery of voting for free stuff. This is dangerous. It's been tried before. This is communism. And it will lead to the collapse of America. That is a guarantee. We know this because history has proven this over and over and over again, going all the way back to 301 AD, when the Roman emperor Diocletians tried to put a price control on goods and services, the edict on maximum prices. That's what it was called. So again, I'm, I'm trying to warn my fellow Americans that we must, we must fight the urge to vote for free stuff. Giving the government control 
of anything is bad because they have fixed nothing. The government cannot control anything. It cannot create prosperity, and it cannot spend your money better than you. There is not one successful program that the government has taken, taken over, that has succeeded. Not one. The latest is the Department of Education. The Department of Education was established probably around the 1970s, and it has been a disaster ever since. Just look at the schools. I think in the beginning of 1970s was really when communism was implemented in America, and it's just taken time to go through the generations. And then here we are, just like um, just like Yuri Bezmenov told us, that they were going to implement it, and they were going to start with indoctrinating the younger generation. And how do you indoctrinate them? Well, you try historical revisionism. You teach them to be dumb, essentially, not teach them history. And here we go. Now we have a candidate that is running on Marxist ideas and is trying to implement communism by price controls. And I'm going to get to that in a second. But before we get into that, this was all price controls were also tried in the revolutionary France, the law of the maximum in 1793. During the French Revolution, the government enacted the law of the maximum, which set maximum prices on essential goods like grain, flour, and meat to ensure affordability during time of economic turmoil and food shortages. The outcome? The price controls led to shortages as farmers and merchants were unwilling to sell their goods at the mandated low prices. This exacerbated the food crisis, led to widespread unrest, and contributed to the economic chaos during the Reign of Terror. The law was appealed in 1794, so it was tried, it led to a lot of pain and agony and misery, and then it was repealed. So again, it was implemented, and it failed. And then a, another example was the Richard Nixon price controls in the United States, 1971 to 1973. In an effort to combat inflation, President Richard Nixon implemented wage and price controls in 1971, freezing prices and wages for 90 days and later extending these controls in a phased approach over several years. The outcome? While the initial freeze temporarily curbed inflation, the controls ultimately led to distortions in the market. Shortages of goods became common as producers found it unprofitable to produce at the controlled prices. Additionally, when the controls were lifted, pent-up inflationary pressures were released, leading to even higher inflation. The policy is widely regarded as a failure and is often cited as an example of the dangers of government intervention in price setting. Mm hmm. And one more example we have of government controlled prices leading to pain, misery, and agony is the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union price controls. The Soviet Union operated a command economy with extensive price controls on virtually all goods and services. Prices were set by the government rather by market forces, leading to artificial pricing across the economy. The outcome? Chronic shortages and surplus of various goods were common as a result of these price controls. For example, the government set prices too low for essential goods like bread, resulting in long lines and widespread shortages. Conversely, prices for other goods were set too high, leading to overproduction and waste. The inefficiencies and economic imbalances contributed to the eventual collapse of the Soviet economy. This one, I think, is the most important and is going to be the topic of the rest of the show. It's something I want to focus on because I think we share the most similarities with this country right now, and that is Venezuela. So price controls in Venezuela started in the early 2000s, and they're still there right now. When's the last time anybody checked on Venezuela? Well, I did earlier today, and I can tell you it is not good. Venezuela is doing very, very bad. Hyperinflation, 200 300%. People are eating their pets. Three out of four people are living in poverty. And in order to reach the poverty threshold, you're talking about living on $1.90 a day. That's what they consider impoverished over there. And that's U.S. dollars, too, by the way. So price controls in Venezuela. The Venezuelan government under President Hugo Chavez and his successor, Nicolas Maduro, imposed strict price controls on basic goods like food, medicine, and gasoline as part of its socialist policies. 
These controls have led to severe shortages as producers could not afford to sell goods at low prices mandated by the government. This has resulted in a thriving black market. Rampant inflation and widespread suffering as basic necessities became increasingly scarce. The economic crisis in Venezuela is often cited as one of the most severe modern examples of the failure of price controls. And this comes from TheEconomist.com. In fact, all these sources came from TheEconomist.com. One came from... Uh, the New York Times. So this is what we're dealing with, folks. Why do, I, why do I talk about controlling the prices of goods? Well, today, Kamala Harris has announced she's going to be revealing her economic policy tomorrow because what is the number one issue for America right now? The number one issue for Americans today is the economy. And nobody, there was nobody better at handling the economy than Donald Trump. He gave us the strongest, most robust economy that we have seen in decades, and the American people know it. So this is why I want to get into this. Kamala Harris and Tim Walls are trying to implement communism here in America. I've said this over and over again. I know you're probably getting tired of hearing it. You're probably like, God, Stephen, talk about something else. The problem is, folks, is if this is implemented, if this ticket is allowed to be – is allowed to go to the White House – and they have control over our economy, and they implement communism and price controls, this is going to lead to all the other times in history where price controls have failed, and it will lead to the collapse of the United States of America. There is no doubt about it. The government cannot control anything. It is too big. It's too bloated. It's too inefficient and too wasteful. It cannot create prosperity, period. And so tomorrow, Kamala Harris is going to reveal her policy ideas because she's been getting pressure from places like the Washington Post because the media, our state-run media, is now running our country and has been for years because we don't actually know who's running our country right now considering Joe Biden is a walking mannequin and completely useless and nobody even knows who's running this country right now. Um, I want to go into the power of free stuff. This is something that is very, very difficult to beat in a, an election because if people only see how they want to – if people only want to help themselves, if people are not familiar with the failures of the past, then they are doomed to repeat them. If there's ever a presidential candidate that comes out and starts trying to bribe people with free stuff in order to win – that should spell danger to everybody. It is hard to vote against free stuff. And usually only the really sucky candidates and the communists and socialists want to run on giving people free stuff. And right now, that is the Harris Walls ticket. So I have an article here from the Washington Examiner. This just came out today. Hat tip to Emily Hallis. Um, it is titled, Harris Teases First Hard Policy Position with Price Gouging Ban. So Vice President Kamala Harris will detail her plan to lower food prices through a, quote, price gouging ban as she unveils her economic blueprint this week. A price gouging ban, folks. She's trying to have government controlled prices on goods and services. This, I'm telling you, is extremely dangerous and it should tell everybody exactly what they need to know about where this ticket is coming from. It is communist in nature. It is Marxist. And it will lead to the collapse of America if these people are allowed to implement this stuff. So the same day former President Donald Trump called her a, quote, an incompetent socialist, Harris teased the price control proposal in a press release Wednesday evening. The vice president is set to announce a broader economic framework regarding her plans to tackle corporate greed, lower the cost of living, and strengthen the economy during a Friday speech in rally North Carolina. Harris's high-profile economic address in a state that she hopes to flip blue – comes as she is faced with criticism for running a campaign light on policy ideas. Quote, if she hopes to prevail, Ms. Harris needs to present her ideas, the Washington Post editorial board wrote Sunday. Yeah, so essentially this is the Washington Post telling Kamala Harris how to run her campaign because, again, Donald Trump is not running against Kamala Harris. He's running against Kamala Harris, the entire damn government apparatus, and its media, the state-run media. That is what we're dealing with right now. Voters tell pollsters they are more confident in Trump to handle the economy, a top priority for them this cycle. Polling data indicate voters favor the former president to bring down inflation, which reached a historic high two years ago under the Biden administration. 
In June 2022, inflation topped 9%. While inflation has eased since then, prices remain high. That is because inflation is compounding, which means if you have two years of 9% inflation, after two years, you will have a price increase of 18%. That is how compounding inflation works. So even if you were to bring inflation down to 2.93%, which is a healthy inflation rate, you still had three years of record high inflation, which means that's what brings the 33% inflation rate that we've seen the last four years. That's why it's so difficult, man. So unless you have negative inflation rate, prices are not going down. They're just increasing at a slower rate. And the only way... The only way to combat inflation, to get us out of this quickly, is by allowing people to keep more of their money so that they can spend more. This is how this works. So I find it just insane that the Kamala Harris and Tim Walls ticket, their way of getting out of inflation is to spend more money. When it's because of the government spending, we're even in this situation to begin with. The government is spending too much money, period. And you're certainly not going to fix it by mandating prices on private corporations. This whole corporate greed narrative that we keep hearing from the left, this will lead to communism. I promise you. This is how it always starts. You have the upper class... Okay, the, the people in power, the politicians, trying to convince the lower class people, trying to convince the population. It's greedy corporations that are causing your life to be so miserable. And what do they do? The people vote for free stuff. They vote for vengeance on the corporations, and they vote to take more of the money from the corporations. And this is how you get communism. You get government-controlled prices, which will collapse the entire economy. So Republicans have long derided President Joe Biden's binomics as a disaster for the country, arguing that his signature victories, such as the Inflation Reduction Act and the nearly $2 trillion American Rescue Plan, fueled high prices. That is true. As Biden's number two, Harris became a target for Trump after her ascension to the top of the Democratic ticket with his campaign rebranding Bidenomics as Kamalanomics. Quote, just remember, she goes to work every morning in the West Wing, Trump told a crowd during a Wednesday rally in Asheville, North Carolina. Her desk is 10 steps from the Oval Office. Boom. So true, man. Prior to that Trump rally, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre told reporters that Bidenomics record was both Biden's and Harris's. And I actually found that audio. Here, check this out. When did you guys learn that Vice President Harris wants to distance herself from Bidenomics. Why do you think that? Axios is now reporting that she is hoping to distance herself from President Biden's unpopularity on the economy. Can you blame her? Do you know this is the Biden-Harris administration? Are you aware that this is the Biden-Harris administration? And she is indeed the vice president. But if the president's policies on the economy were working, or if they were popular, wouldn't I mean, he still just, be the candidate? You literally just had this, the chair of the CEA here who laid out a pretty <laughs> pretty robust uh, point by point about the economy and what has happened under the Biden-Harris administration. And I thought it was pretty convincing. Look, as far as anything that uh, the vice president wants to do or as she's talking about her policy that's campaign related, you would have to speak to her. Uh, one thing that I can, that I know for sure, that I know for sure is that this president, this vice president are fighting very hard uh, to make sure that the middle class is stronger. Uh, they wanted These to make sure that we're working so, to cut taxes so for the middle class, crap, for working man. people, uh, slashing cost uh, for working families, as you have seen them do over and over again. Oh, really? This is something that we believe in. You heard, uh, you heard Jared talk about announcements this week about lowering cost, and People that is something that they believe buyers. in. And the contrast oh could not be more stark between, if anything, the contrast is between what Republicans want to do, maganomics. You're talking about Bidenomics. Maganomics supercharge inflation. That's what they want to do. Raise taxes script. on the middle class by thousands of dollars. Send tax cuts through the roof. Anything. Protect corporate price gouging. Cut Social Security. Cost millions their health care. And heap tax script. giveaways on billionaires and big corporations. That's the division there. That's where there's really uh, night and day. Night and day. But would you admit at least 
that if Bidenomics was more popular, President Biden would still be the candidate. I'm not going to get into polling. What I will tell you is Bidenomics has been something that both the president and the vice president has worked on. You guys, call, you guys have you called it Bidenomics. We talk about how the president is trying to put forward an, an economic policy, building the economy from the bottom up, middle out, that does not leave behind the middle class and make. Okay. All right. I've heard enough. Does anybody actually believe that crap? I mean, how long is he going to be working on this for? Another four years? <laughs> I mean, if he can't do it in four years, then does anybody actually think they're going to be doing it the next four years? I don't... I mean, are people really buying this crap, man? I mean, the level of gaslighting coming from this administration is off the charts. You shouldn't have to wait four years just to get told, yeah, we need another four years. Like, it, I mean, it's just so incredible. And for them, for this lady to sit there and lie the way that she does to the American people is disgusting. It's disgraceful. I mean, my God, man. The, the sheer gaslighting in your face just lies. Joe Biden has destroyed this economy because of his unnecessary government spending. Kamala Harris is the vice president. She, she's 10 feet away from the Oval Office. Neither one of these people have done jack crap for the middle class, the so-called bottom-up, middle-out. The only people benefiting from a Biden-Harris administration has been our foreign enemies and the rich, wealthy elite. Why do you think... There's billions of dollars being pumped into the Democrat Party from the rich, wealthy elite. I mean, it's as simple as that. If people cannot see the lies, if they cannot see through the deception, if they can't see through the lies, the manipulation, the gaslighting, then I don't, then maybe we deserve it. I'm serious. Maybe America does deserve what we get the next four years if Kamala Harris wins this election. We deserve it. I don't think we deserved this four years because I think Democrats cheated in the election. I think Democrats deserve the four years we got from Joe Biden, but I don't think the rest of us do. I think Democrats, if they want to vote for high grocery prices, high inflation, high interest rates, high home prices, high insurance, if they want to vote for that, then let them vote for it. But I don't think the rest of us should have to suffer. But if we buy into this stuff again for another four years, and it's going to be another four years of lies, another four years of them saying, hey, we're trying, another four years of, hey, the economy's the greatest it's ever been, lying right to our faces, then maybe we deserve it. Maybe America, the great American experiment, deserves to collapse. Because it will if these people are elected for another four years. So there you go. So the, the Kamala campaign, the Harris campaign, is trying to distance herself from Joe Biden's disastrous record. These two are complicit in all of this. Kamala Harris should not be allowed to detach herself from her own administration. She's still vice president of the United States. She thinks she's going to be able to just evade responsibility for all of this. Just like Donald Trump said, she is 10 steps away from the Oval Office. Once again, Kamala Harris was in a position of power, just like when she was AG and DA in California, and she did absolutely nothing for the regular working Americans. Nothing. These people are so useless and so feckless, and I'm telling you folks, if we do not, if we allow these people to come into this government and introduce price controls, government price controls, this is going to collapse this country. I can't say that enough. So Trump focused on his own economic blueprint for his second term during the Asheville event, promising to pass, quote, permanent tax cuts, eliminate every costly job-killing regulation the Biden-Harris administration has created, and target everything from car affordability to housing affordability to insurance costs to supply chain issues. This was all created by the Biden-Harris administration. It's what happens when government spends too much money. We're $35, $36 trillion in debt. And these people's idea of getting the country out of debt, their idea of getting us out of these disastrous economic times is to spend more, not to actually fix the problem, which is 
exactly what this is here. The regulations, the job killing regulations, right? It is, you have to, the only person I trust to fix this is the guy that fixed it the four years he was in office. Is the guy that gave us peace and prosperity for four years while he was in office. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not going to hire the arsonist to put out the fire that the arsonist started. Because that is essentially what we're dealing with with a Kamala Walls administration, with a Harris Walls administration, is calling the arsonist and asking him to put out the fire. That's, it's so dumb, but this is exactly why they want to detach Kamala Harris from the Biden administration. So the former president also pledged to combat inflation by ending the Green New Deal and vowed to give all of the unspent funds back to building roads and bridges. Trump also claimed Harris had copied his plan to end taxes on tips for restaurant service industry workers. That is uh, not a claim. He, she did steal his proposal on getting rid of the taxes on tips. That is, we talked about that on the show. And then a month later, she comes out with it. Come on, man. The proposal attracted bipartisan support after the Republican presidential nominee announced he would seek and enact a tax policy during a Las Vegas rally in June. Harris declared her campaign would seek the same tax tips agenda last weekend. But the problem is, is only one of them is going to implement it. This is the problem with flip-flopping like what Kamala Harris is doing is because she was either lying then or she's lying now. My prediction is that she is lying now. She's not going to implement anything that she says she's going to implement. It's going to she's she supports everything that she said she supported back in 2020. And the good thing about Kamala Harris running in this election is that there is so much footage, an endless amount of footage of Kamala Harris's disastrous policy ideas and her ideas in general, from the debates where she didn't get one primary vote all the way up to now. She's been a disaster on everything. And it's Donald Trump's campaign's mission to expose her. That is it. They're trying to play the run out the clock game with Kamala Harris to get people to not look into Kamala Harris, to try and run out the clock so people don't have time to look into the policies she support, the ideas that she wants to implement, because that is what they're trying to do. And when they get in the office, they're going to implement these things and it's going to be socialism. People are going to be my God, why did we vote for this again? That's exactly what this is going to be. It is going to be another four years of regret, buyer's remorse, exactly what we've been dealing with with Joe Biden. Kamala Harris is no different because if you really think about it, Joe Biden is a moderate, but he's not running the country. That is obvious. Who's running the country? My guess is Kamala Harris is the bureaucrats in the background, the radical socialist. We have radicals that are running this country right now. There is no doubt about it. You can, you can see it all around us. All these radical policy ideas like banning fossil fuels and banning gas-powered cars by 2030, uh, banning light bulbs, all of this stupid stuff has all been implemented by this administration. And it's all going to continue for another four years. We cannot deal with this. The American people must not buy into this stuff again. I almost said the S word. I don't want. It's just so mind blowing to me, man. It, it just is. So during her Friday campaign stop and rally, Harris is expected to hit back at Trump. The vice president is set to tell supporters that the former president intends to impose hidden tariffs on household items as she announces additional plans to lower prescription drug and housing costs. Yeah, but the thing is, this is the problem, though. Donald Trump has already done all this stuff. He did fix the economy the four years he was in office. He knows how to do it because he's done it before. Kamala Harris is nothing but a continuation of Joe Biden's disastrous economy. That is it. Four years of Kamala Harris is another four years of Joe Biden. Because Kamala has been running this country anyways. It certainly hasn't been Joe Biden. The guy's been on vacation half of his time in office. And the other half, he's, he's had dementia. So somebody's running this country, and by the looks of it, it's somebody that really, really supports Marxist, communist ideologies, and that is Kamala Harris. And these people aren't even trying to hide it anymore. So I urge my listeners to make sure, to make sure that you call out Kamala Harris on her radical economic policies. Okay, not all the other BS, not her cackling, which... 
you know, that is perfectly legit to go after. But Donald Trump's got this in the bag. All he has to do is attack her policies, period, point blank. That is it. Her policies are a disaster. Donald Trump's policies brought peace and prosperity. It's that simple. I guarantee you the majority of American people do not want another four years of war. They don't want another four years of massive inflation. They don't want another four years of high interest rates, high housing costs, high insurance costs, high grocery prices, war, death, and destruction across the globe, an insecure border with millions of illegal immigrants coming into the country. The American people do not want what they have been given the last four years. The only way to get out of this is by not voting for the same crap again. And that is exactly what Kamala Harris and Tim Walls is. So let's please not go the way of Venezuela. Let's not go the way of the Soviet Union. Let's get it together here. Do not let Kamala Harris and her campaign lie and deceive the American people for another four years. Let's make sure that we get this country back and we get it back on track. We have to make a 180 degree shift from the direction we're going in. We already know that the majority of America thinks it's heading in the wrong direction. I find it extremely difficult to believe that those same 70% are going to vote for another four years of the Biden administration. I, I just, I find it very difficult. All of these polls, all of this crap, it's crap. It's not real. This, this honeymoon period for Kamala Harris is exactly that. They have their DNC coming up, and then for a month after that, we must focus on their disastrous policies that they want to implement for this country. It will lead to communism. Folks, government price controls is communism. Every single time it's been implemented, all throughout human history, it has failed, and it has led to millions of people dying. It has led to pain, it has led to misery, and it has led to desper desperation. We cannot sit here and vote for the same stuff again. And so I don't care what the polls say. I have faith in my fellow Americans that they, when they hear Kamala Harris's I'm going to give you free stuff campaign, they're not going to buy it. Are there going to be millions of people that want it? Yes, of course. And this is the problem. This is why Republicans say Democrats rigged the election. This is why they say this, because they're out there trying to buy votes. They're out there allowing tens of millions of illegal immigrants into their country, making them citizens at, the, at a faster rate than any other time in this country's history, and in order to get them to vote. That's what they're doing. We're watching the Great Replacement Theory happen right now in front of us. And what Democrats usually say after our conspiracy theory becomes just a conspiracy is, oh, it's not actually happening, but it's a good thing that it is. That is what we're dealing with right now with all of this. So they sit there and tell you, oh, we're not making citizens. We're not bringing all these illegal immigrants in here to make them citizens as fast as possible so that they can vote and change the electoral map. And then when you read an article in the New York Times saying exactly that, that the government is giving these illegal immigrants citizenship faster than any time before, then it's going to change the electoral map. The, I mean, how do you I mean, there it is. That is exactly what we – that is the Great Replacement Theory. It's happening right in front of our eyes. When I tell you that Kamala Harris and Tim Walls is an administration of communism and socialism and Marxism, I'm just trying to warn my fellow Americans we do not want to make the same mistakes that all these other countries have made before. This is why it was so important back in the 60s and 70s we didn't want communism in the country because we've seen how dangerous it is. But now we have candidates that are actually running. They're running on communist ideas like health care for illegal immigrants, health care for all, um, government price controls, unlimited illegal immigration. Like, dude, this is so nuts that we're even having the debate about whether we should implement these things. It's I've never I never thought we would be there. But I do want people to look at Venezuela, look at what they're going through and know that we are going down the same road because Venezuela went through the same stuff, the same stuff. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I wanted to get into. I will reach back onto this topic again tomorrow. I just wanted to get in here and give you an episode because what I'm seeing from this candidacy, what I'm seeing from Kamala Harris and Tim Walls should terrify 
everybody. And when she comes out next week and she starts talking about price gouging bans and she starts talking about government controlled pricing on goods and services, just know that is communism. It has been tried in ancient Rome has failed. It has been tried in the French Revolutionary period. It has failed. It has been tried in the Soviet Union. It has failed. And it's being implemented right now and has been since the early, since the early 2000s in Venezuela. And it is failing right now as we speak. People are eating their damn pets. You have a 300% inflation rate, hyperinflation. Three out of four people are living in poverty. And the, the threshold for living in poverty over there is $1.94 a day. That is what people are living on. If you do not want to look like Venezuela, then do not elect Kamala Harris and Tim Walls because electing Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, things are not going to get better. They are not going to stay the same. They are going to get worse, much, much worse. That is a guarantee. I'm trying to warn my fellow Americans, just like I tried to warn them about Joe Biden. Not enough people listened. Almost enough people. But if Democrats didn't cheat in the 2020 election, then we wouldn't be here right now. So here we are again. We have Democrats trying to trick or trying to trick the American people into voting for communism in America. I just don't believe the American people are ready for it. I mean, I don't think they're ready for communism. I think the American people are smart enough to know what is a good economy for this country. And when they hear about government controlled prices, when they hear about free health care for all, when they hear about this stuff that this administration wants to implement, they are not going to buy it. And I hope they don't. I know millions of them will, but I don't think the majority of Americans are ready for communism yet. I just don't think they are. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Like I said, I'm going to get back into this tomorrow. I want to get into some other stuff that's happening. The um, I want to get into... Has the lack of physical discipline on children created the culture we have today? And I have, I wanted to go over a video. You guys remember that kid that ambushed that teacher in the hallway, knocked her unconscious, and started beating her, like her started beating her, like lifeless body on the floor? Yeah, he was sentenced to prison yesterday to five years. And it actually opened up a broader topic I was started I started doing research on and I got some statistics for you from some, from some studies that have been done since the 1970s to now and does physically disciplining your children make a difference are we watching the rise of violence in children and violence in children against adults and this complete disrespect students have towards teachers are parents failing their children by not physically disciplining them? That is what I wanted to get into on in the next episode, and that's exactly what we'll do. So again, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to support the show, please download the podcast. I will. The next show we do will be a video podcast, I promise, and we'll get back into this topic on the video because I want to clip it up and send it out to the masses. So I will release a video. I promise I just couldn't get to it today after the technical difficulties and apparently everybody in my neighborhood mowing their lawn and that sound just coming right through the house. It was there was no way I could do a show. So <laughs> I'm not like I said, I'm not going to have my audience listening to my neighbor mowing his lawn for an hour uh, while I'm recording the podcast. So <laughs> so I will put out a video tomorrow night. We have all kinds of stuff to talk about, and uh, who knows? Maybe we'll do two videos. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But once again, thank you for tuning in. If you guys want to get a hold of me directly, get a hold of me, Stephen Torriello Show at gmail.com, and I want you guys to have a good day, TGIF. I want you to have a great weekend. I'll talk to you here in a little bit. God bless you, God bless America, and long live the Republic. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.